All right, Avalanche fans, welcome to the Lockdown Avalanche podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli, with another episode of the podcast dedicated to your Colorado Avalanche. And a lot to get to today. It is free agency day. So a day that maybe Avalanche fans have been looking forward to for a long time. But is the draft or was the draft any indication of what we might get for free agency? And I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. We will also get to the possible start date for next year for or next season. And we will get to our poll to get to our continue our uh, bestowing 2019 2020 season grades to the Avalanche going alphabetically today. It's Nazem Kadri. So we will get to that. But before we get to any of that, follow the show on social media outlets, follow on Twitter, LOPN underscore Avalanche, which is also where we do these polls. Follow on Instagram, search for Locked On Avalanche and send any questions, comments, concerns, opinions, anything on your mind to LockedOnAvalanche at gmail.com. All right, so the draft has come and gone and we talked about that on yesterday's show. So the question is, now is the abs have turned their attention or are going to turn their attention to free agency. And when I asked the question, is the draft any indication of what we might get from the abs in free agency? What I mean by that is we didn't get much in terms of excitement from the avalanche when you're moving up and down the draft board and you're making trades, you're, you know, you're trading picks to, to, to get, maybe move up. They did do a trade later on with Pittsburgh was way later in the draft. They moved up 10 spots. They didn't do it. They had no second round pick. So they didn't make any trades to get themselves back into the second round. When you had players who were first round projections dropping and some of them dropped through the second round into the third round. And you started to think, well, maybe are the Avalanche going to package some deal where you give them next next year's picks, and it never came, and that's completely fine. The the Avalanche stayed where they stayed and and got some some solid players, and I think guys that'll be good for this team in the near future. But they they you know they did Avalanche things, I guess they they stood pat and. We have been saying for a long time, the Avalanche have cap space. And with this flat cap, not a lot of teams are in the situation the Avalanche are in with cap space. But then again, the Avalanche have a lot of RFAs to pay out. So, and I'll get to numbers. Ryan Clark on The Athletic uh, crunched some numbers and the possibilities of the, the RFAs that the Avalanche have. And well, we'll get to that right now. Why not? So the avalanche extended offers to basically all their RFAs uh, qualifying offers. So he breaks down and he got this from a site called evolving hockey who does analytics and projections and all this stuff. So I won't throw out the numbers just because there's too many numbers, but know that the players are Burkowski, Graves, Jost, Nachuskin, Zadorov. So that's five guys. The total number that they project for this comes to 16 million and change, 16,224. That would only leave the Avalanche with 6.14 in cap space. Now, that is if they sign all five of these guys, including Zadorov, which we have no idea what they're going to do with Zadorov. They might move on from him, which there's things here and there that could happen that they, they could save cap space. But if you get all of those guys back, you only have, what did I say, six six 6.14 left in cap space. That's not a ton to go out and sign these guys, like the, the, the top flight guys that we think the Avalanche, or not that we think, we hope the Avalanche could sign. You're Taylor Hall, you're Alex Petrangelo, you're Tori Krug. You know what I mean? Like that's not enough money to bring those guys in. We have said also Joe Sackick, I don't feel is going to do anything where he's going to sign any of these guys, free agents I'm talking about, not their RFAs. 
to anything longer than a two-year contract. So when Taylor Hall came out and said, I would be willing to do a short-term deal, at least that's what we've heard. I said that fits exactly in line with what the Avalanche are, want to do. So why would he, and because, you know, he wants to play for a contender. Avalanche are obviously a contender. So, you know, put up or shut up. But even, you know, you can't throw everything that you have left over if all the five of those guys sign to Taylor Hall. Then you then you you still have some other guys you have to sign. So reading that article from Ryan Clark in the Athletic really kind of made me think. I think it's going to be a quiet day for for Colorado. They'll get some signings. You know they they were. I mean they they were an active team last year with Don Scoy and Belmar. Um, you know the trade with with Kadri and and uh, Tyson Berry. I think they will be an active team. They're, they're always an active team, but they don't do that splash move. And I don't see that happening again, just because it might look like the avalanche have a lot of money in cap space. And technically they do, but they have a lot of RFAs and it's, you know, if they want to bring all of these guys back, I think the only one who won't come back is Zadorov. I think there's a lot of people calling the avalanche for him. Um, and I, and I, I think they definitely want to keep Burakovsky. Now here's the other thing. Uh, Josh Anderson signed a contract. I don't think anybody under the sun thought he would sign. And that a lot of people are thinking that has now upped the price for Burakovsky because Anderson signed, I think it's Five million per or five and a half million per for seven years. I think it might be five. Uh, and Burkowski is sitting there like, okay, is, did that just set the market? Because if it did, he, he thinks he's worth that. So uh, I don't think the Avalanche were expecting that. I don't think anybody was expecting that. So that gets interesting right away. Now you might have to pay him a little bit more if you want to keep him. Graves, I think they definitely want to keep Graves. Um, I think they definitely want to, I think they do want to keep Jost. Excuse me. I'm still getting over the cold. <clears throat> um, I think they want to keep Jost because he's, he comes at a good price and it won't, you know, it's not going to cost you a lot of money. And if he can turn it around and have a really good season, you've made out with that deal. And choose can they want to bring back and Zadorov is the wild card. So you don't have a lot of money to to throw around, like, you know, to go get Taylor Hall. You just don't have it after the RFAs come down. So um, free agency is always that fun time of year. Uh, usually, except if you're an Avalanche fan, because they, they sign guys. Don't get me wrong. They sign guys. It's just they don't make the splash. And because this is a flat cap and it's going to be a flat cap, <clears throat> Teams have to get creative. And the Avalanche, even though they have 22 2 million in cap space, they're no different. They have to get creative as well. So it's always a fun day. I can't wait for it when it starts. Um, but we were excited for a long time. And as it's getting closer, uh, I think the Avalanche are going to stay put, sign a couple of those guys. Anthony Duclair is out there. I would jump on him. I think he rejected, it was like 1.65, if I'm correct. And I I would go after him in a heartbeat. He's one of the guys I'm, I'm looking for. Uh, tomorrow. I don't know where, where he'll go. I have no idea. This kind of just happened a couple of days ago. But he's somebody that I would target. So, all right. We will uh, take a quick break and then get into when next season might start. But we're going to hear from a couple of our sponsors for the day. And... First, we always talk about Built Bar, but Built Bar has a brand new product. And you always hear about that wall. And I'm not talking about Pink Floyd. I'm talking about the wall that you hit halfway through the day. If you're at work, if you have a desk job, doesn't matter what kind of job you have, you normally hit that wall and then you take one of your five-hour energy drinks or a, a cup of coffee. And then what follows is the crash. Well, Built Bar has created a brand new product called Built Go. And Built Go is a one and a half ounce package. It's like those gel package that uh, suck things that you, that you get a, a 
quick burst of energy that lasts for the rest of your workday. And it's whether it's a mental wall or a physical wall, break through it with built go. You can put it in your briefcase. Uh, you put it in your golf bag, even though golf season's coming to an end, depending on where you live, it's golf season all year long, all, all year long. Uh, it's the best workout gel on the market. And that's what they're calling it as a workout gel. So it's a five hour energy without the same crash and it's natural. So it feels better on your body. It's like drinking a monster energy drink with a third of the caffeine and much better results comes in three great flavors, peanut butter, honey, chocolate, coconut, chocolate mint. Fantastic stuff. So go to builtgo.com, use the promo code LOCKED, and you will get 20% off of your next order. So make sure you put in the promo code LOCKED at builtgo.com, and 20% comes off of your order. All right. Also here from DoorDash and the DoorDash app, and everybody should be familiar with DoorDash and Sure, people have used it during this uh, crisis that we are all going through. So the DoorDash app is an app that brings food right to your door, any food that you are craving right now. Ordering is easy. Order the DoorDash app, open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with the new contactless driving, dro- excuse me, drop off setting. Over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia you can support your local go-to or choose from your favorite national restaurants. Many of your favorite local restaurants are still open for delivery. Just open the DoorDash app, select your favorite local restaurant, and your food will be left at your door. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL. That is $5 off, zero delivery fees on your first order. Download the DoorDash app, enter the promo code locked on NHL. Don't forget the promo code is locked on NHL and $5 comes off your first order. All right. So at the very beginning of the draft, Gary Bettman did his intro thing and said that the league is aiming for a January 1st start time. Could happen. I'm not here to come down on that. And obviously I, I would want, you know, I, I, I'm in the boat of, yes, let's get hockey. It will be very interesting to see, again, how hockey can pull this off. NHL deserves all the credit in the world for what they pulled off in the playoffs. So if they did that, we should expect them to be able to do something similar when they want to start next season. If they say they can get it going by January 1st, who are we to say you can't do that? I said it one too many times for even bringing the the return to play back in the, in bubble hockey did not think it was going to happen and they did it and they did it better than any sport so i think we give them have to give them the benefit of the doubt on if you know what they have in mind he has said they haven't really sat down but that's that they haven't sat down to really flesh things out which is okay but if he is saying i think uh january 1st is our start time then I am inclined to believe him. So what needs to happen? Or I shouldn't say what needs to happen. Well, we all know what needs to happen. And we don't know where this is going to go into the colder months as we're entering that. But what would a, a season that starts on January 1st look like? Probably no bye week. Probably no all-star game. Completely fine with both of those. Bye weeks I hate because your team doesn't play. All-Star game, I'm not a fan of the All-Star game. I think All-Star games have just kind of run their course. And I guess if you're there in person, it's great. But watching from home, it's not very entertaining. And nothing. You know, it did get a little bit better with the three-on-three. But that's that's the problem with like all star games is whatever you introduce gets stale within two or three years or four years and you have to constantly reinvent something else. Skills competition, I'm completely bored with. I don't care to watch guys hit slap shots to see how fast they can hit a slap shot. It's not like they're upping their speed 10 miles an hour every year. I think that the speed competition is maybe the the most entertaining one because that almost resembles, you know, like uh, short track at the Olympics. 
but other than that, I, 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 I'd be fine if we just did away with all all-star games. I really, the pro bowl has got awful. Um, so we will probably skip that. You're going to get, and he has said they want to go to 82 games. They want a full 82 game season, including playoffs. So we are going to get a lot of, like we thought the playoffs, you know, games are coming fast and furious might be the same for the regular season. We're going to get a lot of back-to-backs. You might be playing four games a week for a long period of time. I don't know. But does this benefit anybody in particular? Is there, I mean, does this, does this hurt the veteran teams or does this help the veteran teams? Does this hurt the young teams? Does it help them? I think arguments can be made for both sides of those things. And maybe in the end, you know, I think in the beginning it might hurt the veteran teams because they're playing a lot and and those teams kind of take some time to get their feet under them where rookie teams, or I say rookie teams, young teams, they're ready to go. They're, those guys are full of energy. They want to go, go, go. And then they might get burnt out by the end of the season where the veteran teams know how to buy their time and they're upping their game by the end of the year. So we we thought you know before any of this started maybe october obviously that's not the case we thought maybe november and then there was a time we were like december at the latest right and now we're into january i don't think they can go beyond well i'll say this i don't think they can go beyond that and have a full 82 game season if it's anything past january Maybe if you start at any point time in January, but if you get into February, I can't see how you're going to have an 82 game season and not bleed completely into the summer. And that's what he said he does not want to do is do another thing where, where it was like, you might have to go into summer a little bit, but he doesn't want to go the entire month of August. And I don't blame him because then we're doing this again for the season after this <laughs> season that's coming up. Uh, it, it will be, It'll be a challenge, but like I said, I think the NHL deserves all the credit in the world for what they did. And if they if they're going to try to do January one, now what goes on with the uh, Stadium Series games and the Winter Classic? I I haven't heard. I would assume those are. I mean, you're gonna unless that's going to be the start of your season. January one is the, is the Winter Classic, which would kind of be cool. Kind of be cool. So. And will it be in every single city where teams play? I'm le- I, th- I believe that's what they want to do and introduce fans when the time is right. We are not going to be sitting in these stands in the beginning. But as the season goes on, if we get a vaccine for this thing, it's a little bit safer to go out in big crowds. We might, you know, eventually be able to get back butts and seats but until then it is it's going to be you know empty arenas would they go to would they extend bubble cities would they extend it to like six bubble cities i i i don't know how logistically you would do that but you know from an economic standpoint it 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 would be a struggle if we had a full season with no fans on a lot of these franchises a lot of them so there's a lot of stuff to get worked out. We're going to get through free agency, or at least start free agency, and then that stuff will get fleshed out. You would think by the end of the month, you would have to, you'd have to have a, a, a you know groundwork for what's going to happen for next season by the end of this month. So we just have to play the waiting game for now. It's all we can do. But if anybody can pull it off, um, I think hockey can do that. So, all right. One more advertiser we are going to hear from and then get to Nazem Kadri's grade. Let's hear from Roman. And talking about erectile dysfunction is not easy. Usually we just brush it off or blame ourselves saying things like I lost my mojo or we avoid it altogether with excuses like I had a long day at work. Or I'm just not feeling it. But with Roman, it is easy to talk about with a real healthcare professional who can prescribe real medication. 
It's simple, safe, and totally discreet. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. Healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan if medication is appropriate. Roman will ship it to you with free two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to getroman.com slash locked on NHL and complete an online visit. Erectile dysfunction used to be tough to tackle, but now there is Roman complete an online visit today to connect with a healthcare professional and take care of it. Go to getroman.com slash locked on NHL today. If approved, you get $15 off your first order of ED treatment. That is getroman.com slash locked on NHL getroman.com slash locked on NHL. So before we get to Nazem Kadri, there, there was somebody who put up a tweet about having insider information that Taylor Hall was going to sign with the Avalanche. We will see if that happens. The And he, he works for the score. I don't have the guy's name in front of me. I apologize, but he works for the score. And then on a separate note, the score did put out an article about free agents and where they thought they were going to sign. The very first one was Taylor Hall. They predict he was going to sign a seven year deal at 9 million per. I don't see that happening. (laughs) I do not think Joe Sackick is going to sign anybody to a seven year deal, especially at $9 million per just my state of affairs on that. Hope it happens. Hope, Hope they do sign him, but I don't think the avalanche are in a position to hand out that much money. If he wants that, he will probably get that somewhere. I don't think it's going to be with Colorado. So, all right. Nazem Kadri, what what can you say? The guy was brought in for, you know, I guess you could say that that second line scoring, which we heard so much about going into last year. And he he crushed it, in my opinion. Uh, he he came in and did exactly what the Avalanche wanted him to do. As far as the voting goes, two percent. Gave him a C. So there's some jokers in the crowd. Uh, 30% gave him a B. 68% overwhelmingly gave him an A. Uh, We have a comment from JT. What is it? JT the nut. (laughs) Love it. All right. He says the knock on him coming in was that history would repeat itself and he'd take a really dumb penalty at a really terrible time and that didn't happen. Instead, he was a perfect fit and exactly what they needed. No distractions. Totally agree. Uh, I think he needed to get out of out of Toronto. He was there long enough, stared at the same four walls for 10 years. You need, you need fresh scenery. And Avalanche were looking for him, set up perfectly with the, what they needed to get rid of. Uh, you know, they had a lot of defenders. Tyson Berry didn't seem to be fitting all that well. It was a perfect trade, worked out perfectly for Colorado. And he came in and did what he was supposed to do. And yes, the rub on him was, you know, makes boneheaded decisions. Now, let me bring up his stats here. Still had 90 some penalty, 97 penalty minutes on the season, which I kind of think is like a sneaky number I, I you know he had 97 penalty but you know like like he's saying in, in the in the in the tweet post I none of them were just so god awful egregious in my opinion um you, you know he he is going to protect you he's going to protect his own players and that I think his shining moment to me was when Lemieux just laid out Donskoy against the Rangers completely uncalled for and Kadri was not having that. He is going to back his guys. And he went right after, after Lemieux. I had no problem at all with him doing that. So, um, yeah, he and, and in the playoffs, if you, if you don't have a guy named Nathan McKinnon and maybe even Miko Rantanen, he, he was their best player. You could even argue after Nathan McKinnon, he was their absolute best player. So... I think he had a fantastic season first season with Colorado 51 games, 19 goals, 17 assists, 36 points 
which is nowhere near his high, but you know, he, he did the intangible things. He was great on the power play. He, you, he gives you that, that, that grit on the front end. Uh, and he gives you that, that secondary scoring, which they lacked now in the playoffs where, so 15 games of the playoffs, nine and nine, nine goals, nine assists, 18 points played phenomenal in the playoffs. I am very, very much looking forward to Nazem Kadri next year. And, and now that he's comfortable with this team, they seem to love the guy. Uh, it seems like he is a perfect fit for Colorado. If it's just on the regular season, I'd probably give him a B plus, but because of that postseason, he gets a solid A from me. I am in agreement with the people of Twitter. So definitely an A for Nazem Kadri for me. Next on the list, which this voting will take place over the weekend and be revealed on Monday, Captain Time. Gabe Landeskog is next on the list to get his season grade. So check for that over the weekend. Uh, and that's going to be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely check out Locked On Live, where if you want to go back and watch the live reaction show that I did with Kyle from Locked On Sharks, it's on Locked On. Just follow Locked On Live on Twitter. It's up there. Uh, definitely listen to Locked On NHL if you want to get any news going on around the league. What's going on with free agency? Some draft recaps that I did on the Thursday show with Adam from Locked On Lightning. It's just NHL overload right now with the draft and with free agency and what's going to happen next year or next season. So definitely check out the family of shows over at Locked On on the Locked On NHL side of the Locked On podcast. So lots going on. All right. It's another week in the books. We will be back on Monday. Going to be talking, I'm sure, about free agency, things the Avalanche did, probably some things they didn't do, where they stand heading into next year. So it's going to be a fun weekend ahead. Enjoy it. Stay safe. See you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.